Attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Well, good evening, student pharmacists, and welcome to the second of tonight's doubleheader of Chapter Executive Committee's uh, Core Positions webinars. We started off the night with your APHA ASP National Member at Large talking about the Communications Vice President position, and tonight we'll be talking about the Finance Vice President. My name is Nick Capote, and I'm your APHA ASP National President. And tonight, our subject matter expert is Virginia Souter. She's not only the fastest checkbook balancer in the Northeastern United States, but she's also a logistical and operational savant. And also, if you're ever in D.C., she'll be happy to help sniff out the best midday culinary experiences, and of course, within budget. So I think it's safe to say she is qualified in her field. So before we get started tonight, we're going to go over some ground rules for the webinar controls. As you join the webinar, you may have noticed that a pane on the right or left of your screen may have popped up, and it's going to give you the option to use either your telephone or your computer's microphone and speakers to join the webinar. People have personal preferences. If you use your telephone, uh, it's been reported that the sound quality is a little bit better, a little bit more clear. Uh, however, I've used my computer speakers and haven't had an issue, so it's really up to you. Uh, something we really want to emphasize is in order to be uh, to really ha allow everyone else to have the same experience, uh, go ahead and mute yourself if you're not already muted, just so the background noise doesn't interfere. I know uh, tonight uh, is bike night. I live in downtown Memphis, and about this time, uh, a lot of motorcyclists come downtown to show off their uh, their hogs, and uh, as a result, I get a lot of noise uh, in the background, so I'm going to try and mute myself as soon as I'm done uh, with our ground rules here and after introducing Virginia. All right, and also uh, for, tonight's, for tonight's webinar procedures, we want to make sure that you have sufficient time to ask questions. So as we go throughout the webinar tonight, we want to make sure that if you do have a question, go ahead and type it in the chat box uh, in that pane, that window that came up uh, on your screen. And don't go, and you don't have to wait uh, until the end to type in your question. Go ahead and do it throughout the webinar uh, in order to ensure that we get to compile all the questions uh, towards the end so we don't have to uh, screen through all the questions all at once. So as it comes up, go ahead and type it in. You're the only one who sees the question, uh, essentially. We're, we're compiling them on our end, so it's, it's anonymous if you want it to be. So we want to make sure that the information that you're requesting uh, also gets disseminated to the rest of our listeners and viewers tonight. So with that, we'd like to go ahead and just kind of give you guys an overview of uh, what we've been doing this week with Webinar Week and also what we have ahead for the rest of Webinar Week. It's been a really exciting Webinar Week. We've covered a lot of great topics and if you've missed some of them, don't worry. They're recorded and they're posted on our YouTube channel. We started off this week with our New Practitioner Mentors webinar. And that was really the 101 for aspiring new practitioner mentors, but also current new practitioner mentors, getting them up to date on how they can, on how they can best help you uh, as student pharmacists throughout your year. We continued last night with our patient care, I'm sorry, with our policy vice president. Uh, and this is actually Monday. We continued with our policy vice president, where Lauren, Lauren Kirk, our speaker of the house, introduced you to the APHA ASP advocate training series and all things policy for our policy vice presidents. We continued on Tuesday with our membership vice presidents webinar and our patient care vice president webinar guided by our own national member at large, Maggie Ozer. And tonight we've continued things with our communications vice president webinar, which I hope you were able to attend. Uh, whether you're the communications vice president or not, a lot of great information given by our other national member at large, Brian Donahue. And tonight you'll hear from Virginia Souter from about the finance vice president position, and we'll wrap up uh, some of the core positions that we're highlighting for the chapter executive committees with our international vice president position. And that's tomorrow, uh, and your own national president elect Lucy West will be leading that with the international standing committee. And we'll wrap things up tomorrow night with a, a chapter leadership webinar that's actually backed by demand. We already 
had this webinar one time, and it was led by our previous national president, uh, Dr. Brent Reed. And there was uh, such demand to have it play again that we decided to incorporate it into our webinar week. So again, these webinars are not just for these individual positions or for uh, the official chapter leadership, those who might have a title, but it's really for everyone who's interested in leadership, who's interested in getting a little bit more involved with the profession. So with that, I will turn it over to the illustrious Virginia Souter. Well, thank you so much, Nick. I greatly appreciate the kind intro. Um, tonight we have a couple of agenda items. Uh, we'll go through core positions, role, reminders, really just a recap from annual meeting, um, talking a little bit more about what everyone wants to know, when do we get our money uh, for chapter reimbursement, um, working with different entities on campus, just a reminder again about IRS and taxes, everyone's favorite subject. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what the SVP does with the fundraising and meeting travel chairs. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with some tips. All right, so just to rehash, um, you already probably know this, but I just want to remind everyone that new for 2014-2015, we have the core positions. Uh, that we have talked about in years past and that we're really integrated with that we are now starting for this academic year. But one of the main changes with the recommended chapter leadership structure is really an important change. Um, in years past, any officer could go into go on to pharmacist.com backslash APHAASP and enter the new officer's information who was taking over their position. That um, system has ended. With our new pharmacist.com um, and our new database system, we, are, we have changed that policy. Now the only the person that can update your entire executive board for um, telling APHA staff who is actually the new officer board is the primary chapter advisor. We communicated this to all chapter advisors in June and July. But it's really important because of these 11 positions are now the main chapter leadership structure. Um, there are a variety of chapters, as you will know, and as you probably already do know, there are small schools, large schools, in-between schools, executive boards with five people, executive boards with up to 30 people on them. But these are the core 11 positions that APHA is going to be uh, gathering information on. And obviously, the finance vice president is the number four here on our chapter leadership structure. Um, you, because the fundraising chair and the meeting travel chair are not on this leadership structure, does not mean that they, we don't want you to have them. It just means that you'll be the communication point person going forward to communicating inf any information to those two chair positions. Again, the it is the primary chapter advisor's responsibility for assigning members to these elected positions through their pharmacist.com profile. They do not have to have your membership ID number because they already have access to the membership roster, but they do need to go in and assign Jane Doe to the finance vice president role. Um, and that is crucial because if we don't have any information on your chapter, that means that you could have the position, but we don't have it tied into anything for, to your chapter, so we cannot communicate with you. Um, and as we all know, communication is key to any good organization. As I said earlier, the finance vice president oversees the fundraising chair and the meeting travel chair. Uh, this, may, uh, this may change at your chapter. The names may vary. But this is how APHA ASP will go ahead and start using these terminologies and explain these positions going forward. So let's just rehash. What is the finance vice president's role? The finance vice president has traditionally been your chapter treasurer. Um, but in this day and age, chapter treasurer sounds a little bit old and dull. And there's a little bit more than just making sure that there's money in the account. Um, so let's learn about this. Of course, you do maintain the financial records of the chapter. You do need to provide a detailed annual report of expenses and income to the chapter executive committee and the advisor um, by April 15th of your presiding year. I just want to remind everyone that you're elected into spring. So obviously, when you're elected, you don't, you don't give the detailed annual report. You'll be learning from the outgoing um, SVP. But in 
April 15th of 2015, you will need to provide this report to the executive committee. Um, you'll also need to make sure that you share documents with your executive committee as well as, really key, the chapter advisor so that they can properly submit tax documents to the IRS by May 15th or whatever your fiscal year is, and we'll get to that in a minute. Your position description. Um, again, you're going to manage the chapter's finances by monitoring the chapter's spending and fundraising and maintain accurate and up-to-date records. One thing I do want to say um, about this position description, a lot we've noticed a lot of chapters have, have yet to define the spending and fundraising rules and regulations, and that that's something your chapter has not done you definitely need to do this. You need to have um, backup and support for any decision that you make. So um, you do need to have rules and regulations going forward. We've seen a couple of chapters be uh, get into some serious financial distress because there were no rules and regulations. So any one time anyone spent anything, they really thought it was the chapter account was their own personal account. And that is not, and as a negative, that is nothing we ever want to see with a chapter. Your responsibilities as a financial vice president to the chapter is you need to process all invoices, checks, and reimbursement to the chapter. If your chapter has a credit card, you need to make sure you need to authorize who actually has the credit card, when they spend it, um, is there a balance on the account, et cetera, um, and make sure you get that card back. Uh, you need to record all receipts and disbursement from chapter accounts and oversee all chapter fundraising activities. There is a fundraising chair, but you actually have the final word on whether or not a fundraiser should go through. Um, you have the vision. You should have the vision to see if it's going to be a successful fundraiser um, and if it's actually met all the parameters and, and rules and regulations. You're also going to provide a detailed annual report of expenses, like we mentioned before, um, to the executive committee and advisor prior to the IRS deadline of the presiding year. Again, that's so huge because we've seen so many chapters that have not done this and then get in trouble with the IRS. Um, so we'll talk about that point a little bit later. All right, definitely another responsibility to the chapter is you need to understand and adhere to all college and university or college or university banking requirements. Um, you need to make sure that all verify all proper signatures are on all paperwork. Uh, in this past, in just in the past two months, we've had quite a bit of chapter advisor turnover, um, and so you need to make sure if these chapter advisors, co-advisors, primary advisors have changed, that your documents with these school or college um, have also changed. Also, verify with um, that the chapter advisor's paperwork is current as well. So, again making sure the EIN has transferred, your employee identification number has transferred if there's been anyone that has left a position, and making sure that you have all these documentations, um, all these numbers and accounts documented in one location. Now, your responsibilities to the chapter. You're going to oversee the chapter fundraising and meeting travel chair and you're going to really help support them in ensuring that chapter reimbursement policies are adhered to. If you have a member motivation or a member um, rewards program, you need to make sure and help them, uh, those two chairs, when they have to say no or they have to say yes or they have to tell someone they're missing the deadline, um, another chair. So you really have to help back them up. You are there you're their eyes and ears on the executive committee, and you're the one helping making sure, ensure that the policies are, are held, are, this policy standards are being adhered to. You also need to advise chapter officers on chapter spending. Um, you will need to make sure uh, and maybe have tough conversations if someone is not adhering to their budget. Um, you want to make sure that there are positive balances left for all accounts. Uh, because you want to also sound the alarm if the balance is starting to get a little bit, uh, instead of a bright, glowing, uh, positive uh, black, it's starting to get a little gray. So you want to make sure that you start to sound the alarm when things aren't going the way that you wanted to or that you had budgeted for. 
Um, also, your other responsibility to the chapter is not, not only do you work with the fundraising and meeting travel chair, but you're going to work a little bit more with patient care chairs and the meeting chair to apply for grants um, or chapter projects um, that you feel warrant a grant. Um, and so that's where you're going to start learning a little bit more about grant writing. Um, hopefully some of you have already dabbled into that a little bit. It is tedious, but it does make your CV stand out just a little bit more. Um, and you can always talk to faculty as well if they know of a grant um, program that your patient care chair can go ahead and apply for. And of course, the last one, I harp on this one, but you can probably understand why. You know, we like having, uh, you know, an Aunt Sally, that would be Aunt Sally Mae, but no one really wants, you know, uh, the, the, the lovely eye of the federal government looming over you too long, um, and that's really for in regards to the IRS and taxes. So you will need to make sure, and you need to work with the chapter advisor to verify the necessary paperwork has been uh, filled out with the IRS. But the really key point is that you work in tandem. The financial vice president does not, as does not, fill out the IRS paperwork. Um, the IRS paperwork should be filled out by the primary chapter advisor. The primary chapter advisor is made aware that they should be the person filling this out. And the reason being is that they are the continuity for the chapter. And also, sometimes chapter, it depends on the chapter, but sometimes the chapter advisor is actually the point person on the IRS paperwork, um, and they are the contact person at the chapter. So you need to make sure that you're not filling out the paperwork, that the chapter advisor is filling out the paperwork. Of course, that may vary by school rules and regulations, but APHA's rule of thumb is that the chapter advisor fills out the paperwork. You get everything ready to help fill out the paperwork, and you ensure that it does actually happen. Um, if you are the one that actually submits it um, for whatever reason, you do need to make sure that you verify with the chapter advisor that has been filled out. All right, let's talk about your time commitments. The SVP position is pretty strong throughout the year because you're always going to be having fundraising, and you're always going to be having meetings, and you're always going to be having a budget. So you get to be pretty much in the limelight throughout the year. You do serve a one-year term. You do keep track of the budget throughout the year. We really do want you to attend all the fundraising events. Since you're serving as a mentor to the fundraising chair, you're going to be their second pair of eyes. And also, you're going to be helping mentor them um, because they need sometimes that help. They need that, like I said, that second pair of eyes. But you also want to make sure that you're show, showing support the funding chair because as we all know fundraising is not an easy task um, and you're also going to meet monthly with the fundraising chair and the meeting chair to discuss their progress this is super important um, this of course is up to you but if you skip those meetings that's when you find things aren't really going that well um, so I do want you to meet monthly face to face I think that is better than um, doing emails just because you can go ahead and think through projects or think through um, problems a little bit better when you're meeting face to face. Um, so ensure that that is a time commitment that you do budget your time accordingly for. Now a couple of reminders um, for you and for the audience. All right, bank accounts. This really varies for all chapters depending on the rules and regulations of the college or school pharmacy, if you're public or if you're a private school. So some schools only have a school, can have an account through the school or college. Some of them can have an outside account, such as Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, etc. And some actually have a combination of both. So there are three actual ways you can have a bank account. Um, if you have, well, you should all have an advisor, but your advisor should be able to serve as a co-signer on the bank account. I think that is good practice. And of course, the advisor signs and submits all IRS paperwork. Just please remember that every school is different. Um, it, there are different procedures for public and private schools, and even public schools within the same state have different, different policies and procedures. Um, and then lastly, the biggest thing is your IRS tax status. 
actually know your chapter's designation. Um, most of your chapters will be XYZ, but there are different designations. There are 401c3s, there are 401c6s, there are not-for-profits, non-for-profits, not-for-profits. So you always want to make sure that you speak knowledgeably about your tax status. Know your tax status. Go to the irs.gov. Learn about your tax status. Um, and make sure that you can go ahead and uh, provide the proper documentation to anyone that has, makes a donation, a financial donation to you, so that you can give them the correct paperwork if they do ask for documentation of your tax status for tax for their tax purposes. Now, what do chapter advisors have access to on pharmacist.com? This is a reminder because this is new. Chapter advisors on pharmacist.com have will become your best friend because they have access, immediate access in real time. It just takes about half an hour to update a roster. So if someone joined at 12.30 in the afternoon, probably by 1 o'clock, um, a half an hour later, 1 p.m., that the membership roster would show the person joined. So they have access to membership rosters in real time. Well, why is that important? Um, well, that's really important because it helps you create a better picture for your chapter reimbursement reports. Of course, right now you guys are all starting to organize your fall drives, and of course there's always those rebates that are very helpful for chapters. But you can immediately match any checks that you get in the mail or an EFT um, remittance. You can go ahead and match that with your chapter reimbursement reports. So that's going to be much more helpful than in the past when we would send um, checks and you really wouldn't know what the checks were for to the chapter. So you can match that with your chapter reimbursement reports. And lastly, what do chapter advisors have access to in pharmacist.com? They can make a one-time chapter dues update in the spring. So looking forward to spring of 2015, they will be asked to go ahead and update and, and or verify the chapter dues for the 2015-2016 year. There will be no more sending emails back and forth. This is what we want our chapter dues. They will go ahead and assign the chapter dues and also a, um, earmark if you collect state dues as well. Um, so that is something that only the chapter can do on their pharmacist.com profile. As you can tell, pharmacist.com is becoming a much more robust portal for chapters and, uh, excuse me, for chapter advisors and it's a great place for financial, for the SEPs to start talking with their chapter advisors about these uh, important document. All right, APHA chapter reimbursement. This is everyone's favorite topic. Why? Easy. There are some financial deadlines for fall drives. Uh, take a screenshot. Uh, October 15th, or talk to your MVP, they also have this. October 15th is the last day to to ensure a $3 rebate for anyone that joins APHA ASP. Um, November 8th is the last day for the $1 rebate for anyone that joins APHA ASP. So if you look at your membership, um, excuse me, if you look at all of your membership um, reports or your reimbursement reports, you'll be have a you can easily paint a picture about what's going on. Um, Another important deadline that's not necessarily tied into financial uh, reimbursements, but October 31st is the last date to qualify for dual membership for those that, for final year students um, for NAPLEX eligibility. So if they want to get their NAPLEX book for 2015, they have to go ahead and join by October 31st. And then the next thing that they need to do is November 1st through December 15th, those 2015 grads need to request the NAPLEX. So it's just not something that's automatically guaranteed. They do need to provide us a mailing address and that that's through that request. So those are some important deadlines tied into uh, finances for the fall. Now, here's what you really, really want to know. I know you're all asking, okay, that's great, that's nice, $3, $1, but when do we get our money? So chapter and state due payments. Uh, APHA We'll go ahead and send to the chapter and state dues uh, and to the states if they 
collected in your particular state for your particular state. Six payments by the end of the month. So going forward, there will be a payment um, in October for June to September enrollments, November for just for October enrollments, December just for November enrollments, January just for December enrollments, and June 2015 for the spring drive. Um, but I do want to point out you get an extra check in February, end of the month February, for all the rebates that were you collected for the October 15th and the November 8th deadline. So the $3 and the $1 rebate. So I just want to make sure that you do understand that you get two different types of payments. You get regular payments for people that join, for members that join, and then you get the administrative allowance payments, which is the rebate, and it's a separate check in February. So if you're looking for that windfall, um, make sure that you know it's coming in February. And you can always easily access that, like I said, on your um, chapter membership, excuse me, on your chapter reimbursement reports because you'll know it's coming because obviously you've been tracking this with your advisor um, in real time. All right, working with your chapter advisor, your school officials, your budget, you know, everything else that we've talked about since annual meeting. So working with your chapter advisor, hopefully you have not had a uh, chapter change, a chapter advisor change, just uh, for continuity's sake, but maybe it's a good thing um, if you did have a chapter advisor change. But I do want to make sure that if you do have a chapter advisor change, or let's say your chapter president or your president-elect had to step down, that you do update any paperwork um, for who is authorized to make deposits and withdrawals. That's very important. Um, and also for your bank account, again, verifying where statements are sent. If you're sending it to a mailing address at someone's home, make sure that you've updated it since a lot of you do move um, around town sometimes. Also, make sure that you have, working as a chapter advisor, review proper transactions. What does that mean? Well, it just means, it means what is your chapter, what does your school require, what's a proper transaction, how do you, does, do all parties understand that? If they give you a deposit, do you deposit within one day, two days, five days, seven days, ensuring that you just don't have unwritten expectations of each other. Also, verify your operating costs for the year. Review the operating costs. You've created your budget um, in this past summer, and just want to review any new operating costs that are going to be coming up if you already know about them. And also, working with your chapter advisor, talk about your fiscal health for the year. Yes, you've created a budget, but let's see what's going to come up through this throughout the year. And then seeing the fiscal health of the chapter. You may have budgeted for certain things, but if some fundraisers don't come through, or let's say you applied for a grant and that doesn't come through, what needs to be cut? What do you want to end up with when you leave your term? Of course, you always want to leave your bank account in a better place than you actually inherited with. But what is the fiscal health, and what does that mean for your chapter? For some chapters, this means a couple thousand dollars. For some chapters, this means a couple hundred dollars, just depending on the size of your membership and how long your chapter has been, um, how long it has been in existence. Also working with your chapter advisor, filing your taxes. What are your internal due dates to make sure that you hit that um, May 15th deadline? So creating some back um, creating a back bill and creating those back due dates. Also, reviewing the policies and procedures from the chapter and or school heading into the fall term. Things do change, um, so you never want to just assume that just because you did it last year, it's still correct for this year. And then also working with your chapter advisor, uh, start thinking about at the end of the fall term what your chapter dues amount should be for 2015, or start thinking about that in January, February. Um, do you need to raise your chapter dues? Do you need to keep it the same? These are honest conversations that need to happen and looking at your and working with your MVP, what are your goals for 2015, 2016? Because a lot of chapters do um, use the money from the fall drives to maintain their, their budget for the year. So these are conversations that you need to have now so that way you're not trying to scramble at the at the last minute for 2015-2016. Working with your school officials. Um, school officials change as well, just, as, just like I said. 
So you need to make sure that you have a good understanding of whom and who you are allowed, whom and when you're allowed to contact or solicit for funding or support. Some of you can work through your alumni office. Some of you can't. Some of you can't even get a report of the alumni. Some of you can't even contact the businesses that the school may go ahead and contact. So you really need to have a good understanding because you never want to be on the bad side of any administration because they always put out the rules, so it's your responsibility to know them. Also, use your faculty resources to, permit, to prepare materials and find appropriate locations. You don't always have to reinvent the wheel. See what worked well last year. Um, see if they have any um, great tips to help maintain or trim your budget. Um, and also, working with school officials, just making sure that you're not holding a fund, your main fundraiser at the same time. Another organization is holding their huge fundraiser. So does that mean you might have to move something? Yes, it might mean that you may have to work together as two organizations to share a date or share a fundraising time, but you want to also make sure that you hold your event to maximize the benefit of um, your time and commitment and your outcome of it as well. Now, working with your budget. Um, this should have already occurred as you're going into the fall term. Um, you need to have already have a budget established for the fall term. You need to already have figured out the money needed to initiate proposed events, your expenses, your projected net income, and whether or not it's still a go. Um, if you are unsure about this, you need to start go ahead and asking those chairs or those vice presidents now. Are you still having the event? Are you not having the event? Um, because you need to go ahead and maintain a, your fiscal health. Also, I, you will be the stickler sometimes. You need to make sure that they, your executive committee and your chairs and your uh, advisor also help stick to dates, deadlines, and allotted amounts. Um, you should have already given everyone their allotted amounts shortly after the summer retreat. Um, and also remember just to review your internal resources. Sometimes someone knows somebody so um, that can help out with paper or supplies for a patient care advice, a patient care project. So just make sure that you do work within your budget. You don't over want, ever want to overextend yourself or don't ever promise someone, oh, that's a really good idea because you don't want to turn them their idea down. Sometimes you will have to say no. So it's okay because it just needs to make sure the event meets the fiscal health of your chapter. And if it doesn't fit in there and with the mission of your chapter, it might not be so wise to go ahead and hold it. All right, IRS taxes, everyone's favorite, um, like I said, big brother. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the three top questions that we get here in the office. Does my chapter have to file taxes? And if so, how do I file them? Yes. All APHA ASP chapters have to file a tax return every year. The method by which your chapter files taxes, however, will differ. There are two options. Your chapter either files taxes with their university, school, or college of pharmacy, or the chapter files directly under the IRS under APHA's group exemption. When is my chapter's tax return due? Also, excellent question. <laughs> Very easy answer. It's the 15th day of the fifth month after the close of your tax year. So if you chose option two, which is chapters filed directly with IRS under APHA's group exemption, APHA's fiscal year is January to December. So that means that you have to file by May 15th. <laughs> well, yes, May 15th. <laughs> so that's very easy. If you don't follow option two and you go with option A, well, you need to figure out what uh, what's your fiscal year for your school. Uh, third best question, who files our tax return? Well, your chapter advisor, as we have learned, files it with financial information provided by the, fi the finance vice president, a.k.a. you. Student development staff, a.k.a. me, will send an email to chapter advisors by April 15th with tax FAQs and instructions since we are following our own fiscal year. Um, does Another question that we get a lot is, does, do you have my chapter's 
EIN or employee identification number on record? Yes, we actually have quite a few chapter um, EINs on file. So if you don't know what your EIN is, go ahead and contact myself and I'll go ahead and tell you what we have on file. And of course, CCing your chapter advisor um, because sometimes paperwork does get lost. All right, so that's great, Virginia. All very nice now that you've scared me. Um, but what should our chapter budget for um, when filing my IRS? Um, and what should I tell them that I actually spent the money on? Well, uh, great. These are the, some of the things that you should budget for. Um, and I'm not going to give you how much you should budget for it because it just depends on your chapter. Um, APHA ASP Summer Leadership Institute. Uh, you should always know that we you should always allocate at least sending one chapter officer to the APHA Summer Leadership Institute in Washington, D.C. Um, the second thing that you should budget for is the National Patient Counseling Competition. Um, that's completion, but that should say competition. Uh, you should always send at least help the one person that you send to the national competition at our annual meeting. That's a nice thing to do for them. Um, patient care project supplies, also very nice to have. If you're going to be working in the community and holding a patient care project, you should probably need to provide supplies. Of course, your reimbursement policies, those are also super important. Do you have a policy at 100%, 50%, a sliding scale? So that's something that you need to also figure out for your budget. Lastly, excuse me, almost lastly, retreats. We advocate holding retreats at least a minimum of three times a year. Your fall retreat, your, excuse me, your summer retreat, your winter retreat, and your spring retreat. Those are huge. You need to come together as a group in order to figure out what your goals are for the year. And the best venue for that is a retreat. And also, food for meetings. Let's be honest. Most of your meetings are during lunch because that's the only free time in the schedule. So if your people are going to be there, you have to be able to feed them. Um, you don't have to feed them, you know, huge buffet style, um, lovely food, but, you know, some food, pizza is always good. Maybe at the end of the year you give them a nice, a super nice meal, um, but you do need to help budget for meetings, uh, food for meetings. Ooh, the fundraising chair. So we talked a little bit about, briefly, about uh, your, who you work with, but now let's talk about a little bit more about the fundraising chair. And this is the best quote that I can think in, uh, think of to help inspire those fundraising chairs, is what you believe in has to be bigger than what you are afraid of. And what most people are afraid of is a no. Um, but why are you asking? It's because you feel passionately usually about something. And this quote is from a great book um, that I have all the mid-year regional coordinators read, and this is the Accidental Fundraiser. Um, and so if you have a chance to read this book, it's full of hundreds of tips um, and charts and organizational um, spreadsheets. So don't be afraid to read this book. It is a book, um, <laughs> but uh, it's a very helpful one. So your fundraising chair, since they're mostly afraid of hearing a no, you have to help inspire them. And let's start a little simply. Assist the, vol assist the policy vice president in developing and implementing fundraising for Back to Pack campaign. New for this year, Back to Pack campaign is going to be something that's held year-round. So that's something that you need to go ahead and start thinking about how you integrate that into fundraising. Also, Another responsibility, of course, is to attend the SVP workshop at annual meeting. Also, plan and attend fundraising events throughout the term, um, but that should be planned prior to the term starting. And also, meet monthly with the finance vice president. The fundraising chair needs to raise money through fundraising events throughout the term. Excuse me. <coughs> for regional and national APHA ASP meetings. And you can also include state meetings in there as well. Also, the last two are super, super important, is evaluate prior fundraising of the chapter to determine what fundraisers to repeat and the most profit profitable times to have them. If you've been doing something for years and it's been tradition, but it's not really bringing in the revenue that you used to, maybe it's time to go ahead and evaluate 
and maybe get rid of that or modify it slightly. So that way you're not using tons of money for something that's not giving you a great return on your investment. Also, huge for, huge for fundraising chair responsibilities is to develop new fundraising ideas and consistently evaluate their applicability. Um, and also to be aware of rules and regulations of your, of your state. Some states don't allow you to have uh, lotteries or um, small fundraising events or raffle tickets. So you really do need to make sure that you, they do have a good idea of what the rules and regulations are for the state as well. And that just goes back to being, are they applicable? Uh, the fundraising chair does need your support, so that's why you attend all of their all of their um, meetings. But you know, a kind word also lifts their spirits too, because as we all know, fundraising events we've had good ones and we've had bad ones. So there will always be a bad one, and we just learn, or one that maybe didn't hit the mark. So just make sure that you are supportive of them and their efforts, making sure that you provide that constructive feedback so that their next event is, is better and does hit the mark. All right, now we're going to talk about the meeting travel chair. The meeting travel chair has a lot of responsibilities in regards to meetings, of course. Uh, the next thing is that for your meetings, this is a little bit more scripted or more, uh, it's just more scripted for this particular chair. Don't forget they will be promoting the meetings. They're we want you to have all of your chapter officers, so they're going to help motivate the chapter officers to register for these meetings. Um, they should serve or reserve, excuse me, all of the hotel rooms for the chapter attendees as early as possible. Remember, APHA um, ASP does and APHA do offer quad rate, so that is something very helpful um, when you're booking a hotel. They also can help coordinate transportation arrivals and departures to from schools. Um, some of your MV, your meeting vice president, your meeting chairs, will organize buses. Um, we've had big buses, little buses, so we love to see a bus. And if you need help with bus parking, let us know, and we'll do our best to coordinate um, if if you do bring a bus. Also, um, your meeting travel chair would also host specific a specific meeting for attendees before the event, highlighting events that at the meeting that may be mandatory for your chapter, rules and expectations, and then also make reservations for a group dinner at the meeting, usually on a Saturday night. Um, for the responsibilities, just make sure that they keep up to date on upcoming meetings and deadlines, coordinating the chapter hotel arrangements to and from the meeting, and then also serve as the chapter liaison to the MRM coordinator. <coughs> Excuse me. The chapter liaison to the MRM coordinator will probably take really effect in 2015-16, um, but if you are starting to serve as the MRM coordinator liaison now, I think that is definitely great. Um, and you can start doing that with this year's fall MRM. Also, you would need to work with a finance vice president to determine your reimbursement policy, if you have one for people attending a meeting, and how much can be refunded, and what is required for reimbursement. And of course, meet monthly with the finance vice president. So let's talk about a couple of meetings. Um, and I'll talk about the two I know best, APHA mid-year regional meeting. I really, if you can, push your chapters to register well before the deadline. Um, remember, we've had to go ahead and close the meeting well before the official deadline because we sold out of actual chairs in the room. Um, but the official deadline is 14 days before the start of your MRM, but just make sure your chapter, give them an early deadline, tell them they have to register 30 days, 40 days. Um, the earlier you can get them to register is really the better. Um, this year, the MRM rate has changed. It's 105 for APHA ASP chapter members. Uh, and then we will continue with the pilot program for merging Region 7 and 8. And then locations for 2015 MRMs will be released in mid-September. Uh, and that is all for that MRM meeting. APHA 2015 is March 27th through 30th, 2015 in San Diego, California. 
uh, I know it's Diego, but um, housing and registration are open already. And the rate is $235 for APHA ASP members who register by February 3rd. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up with a couple finance vice president tips. You may have to learn how to say no. Um, and if you have to say no, make sure you have a policy and procedure to back you up and you have the support of your chapter advisor and chapter president. Maintain professionalism. Sometimes we do want to go with the edgy fun you know, fundraiser that let's have it all, you know, put our APHA logo on a shot glass and let's all take a shot, you know. And it's, is, it, is it professional? Does it, does it cross that line? Um, that's something that you may have to make a determination for. Will the faculty like it? Do they feel it's being professional? And sometimes you may have to say no. Um, it's better to say no early in the process than when you already have, you know, 500 shot glasses that your faculty do not support. Um, already ordered and you have to go ahead and pay for them. I'm not saying that you can't use shop glasses, I'm saying that you do need to maintain professionalism in regards to your fundraisers. Um, leave the budget in a better place than you found it. Uh, that's always something that's a basic rule of thumb. Document and evaluations um, are important for everything that you do. Make sure you identify a successor. When you go ahead and uh, look at your budget for 2015-2016, make sure you at least allocate at least a 5 to 10 percent increase in your budget expenses because things, uh, things do increase in pricing. Also, organize a, for a successful fundraiser means first organizing a cohesive team. So make sure your team talks, has a trust um, between them. Because uh, if you don't, it's going to be a hard year. Best wishes to you, but you do need to make sure that you have a cohesive team. People want to give. You just need to ask. Um, people want to give of their time. They want to give to help the chapter. Really remember, fundraising is really about relationships. If you're bubbly and outgoing and kind, people will probably be bubbly, outgoing, and kind back to you. There may be a couple of non-kind people, but if you actually truly care and come across with it, from the heart, people will usually reciprocate. Fundraising really does involve leadership development. You learn how to turn a no into a yes. You learn how to develop those budget management skills. You learn how to make $5 really you know, go as far as you can. Um, and you should always remember to write a thank you card to everyone involved, especially those that are underappreciated because it means something to them. It, they want to give, but they also want to be acknowledged for what they do. All right, that pretty much is getting close to wrapping up. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and watch us on YouTube um, where you can catch every exciting episode and training webinar for APHA ASP. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now to the question portion, and let's see if there are any questions. All right. Well, thank you, Virginia. Virginia is one of a few very dedicated student development staff members. So uh, while she catches her breath and identifies any questions, looks like we have a few. Um, so I'll ask those in just a minute. But just to reiterate some of the, the high points that Virginia touched on throughout the webinar that I think are really helpful for our vice presidents, our finance vice presidents, is uh, something that Virginia talked about earlier is really each finance vice president's position is unique from chapter to chapter. So while you may be interested in finding out what another chapter did, first and foremost, it's really important to really traverse that learning curve of what goes on at my chapter's finances. How does my banking situation work? What is my IRS identification? What is our tax status? And how does that affect me? So before you branch out maybe to other chapters, for this time we would recommend reach out to that previous vi uh, finance vice president or equivalent uh, for that person that was in that position last year. Uh, it's going to do worlds of help for you as you improve the position and just like Virginia said, leave it better than you found it. Secondly, I really want to emphasize how finances in general are going to be a big part of not only your personal life, but your professional life as well. And it's a big learning opportunity that you might not get in a classroom at your College of Pharmacy. 
some colleges some colleges of pharmacy offer finance electives, but from the students that I talked to, those still aren't very widespread. And again, it's not a requirement; it's just an elective. So take this as an opportunity, finance vice presidents, to step out of the box a little bit and develop a new skill set. I serve on the APHA, or I'm sorry, on the American Pharmacist Association Board of Trustees, and uh, our treasurer, his name is Terry Baskin, he's from Arkansas, he knows so much about finance, whether it's investing, uh, whether it's just fiscal responsibility in general related to small businesses or nonprofits, and uh, it, it's really a, a nice thing to, to see that present on our board, and he's learned that through hands-on uh, activities throughout his business life. So again, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, Virginia, do you see any questions on your end? Um, no, I think we probably addressed all of them. Um, and I'm glad to say that um, we had a couple people say that they had came in late, which is great. Um, but the I do want to reiterate that the since they came in late, that the webinar will be available for them to listen to probably starting next week. Okay, cool. I've identified a few questions for you. So um, the first one comes from a student, uh, Brianne West from University of Tennessee. Uh, Brianne asks, uh, are any, have any chapters actually been successful in gaining grants uh, from what we talked about earlier? And I can go ahead and answer that one just because I'm familiar with a couple of the chapters who have been successful with getting grants from Cardinal Health uh, and their foundation. Uh, they actually set aside funds every year for colleges of pharmacy to apply for uh, and uh, anyone else that is interested in doing prescription drug abuse and misuse uh, prevention activities. And so Cedarville University uh, School of Pharmacy actually got a grant. Uh, University of New Mexico College of Pharmacy got a large grant, uh, and that was actually showcased in the award ceremony this past year uh, at annual meetings. So it's not one of those ideal situation type things. It actually happens in College of Pharmacies uh, and their chapters of APHA ASP do a lot of wonderful things with this grant money from these organizations. So something to keep in mind uh, as a source for extra funding that you may not have thought about previously. Um, and just to add on to that, we I have seen chapters also receive grants for different career expositions or um, smaller outreach initiatives. So it just depends on what your chapter is doing, because whatever your chapter is doing, let's be honest, there's probably an obscure grant out there. You just have to, the problem is you're having to find it and research for it. Right. Um, I've got another question. Uh -huh. this, this question says, let's see, so for the rebate dates, is it, if you turn in your uh, chapter membership dues by October 15th, is it $3 total as a rebate or $3 per member rebate? It's actually, that's a great question. It's $3 per member. Nice. So that $3 per member can actually go a long way towards you as the finance vice president planning a lunch for your chapter or something that you didn't originally anticipate as being part of the budget. So there's all these ways to sort of glean extra money for your programming throughout the year. Yes, just keep in mind that the check comes in February or at the end of February, so January, March. <laughs> so budget accordingly. Accordingly, exactly. Um, Nick, I have a question from Henry Lim. And he wants to know if anyone else aside from the chapter advisor will have access to the membership roster, particularly any of the officers. Um, and the answer to that is, is no. Um, APHA can only give access to the rosters uh, for legal reasons to the chapter advisors. Now, if the chapter advisor decides to go ahead and share that with you, that is up to their discretion. Um, maybe in future years, Right now, we can, but just for right now, for this first year, um, and just for privacy concerns, it's only going to the chapter, chapter primary advisor. Um, so you will have to work with the chapter primary advisor to pull that that roster from and get that roster, um, or they can give you, um, they 
can you give you a roster without all of the personal and private information for, for members? Alrighty, I've got one last question on my end. Sure. The question reads, what tips do you have for avoiding running into other organizations' fundraising efforts, specifically fundraising the same items or on the same days? Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. So, yeah, again, good question. And, you know, some experiences that I've, I've had with that is get with the other student organization leaders and see if you can't come up with a common Google Calendar. And uh, that can kind of solve the fundraising days problems, uh, just so everyone's on the same page. You know, organizations do, in a sense, compete uh, for those limited amount uh, of dollars from our student pharmacists. But it, it, does, it can definitely help to sort of spread that wealth as far as uh, just staying informed as to when we are having our big fundraising events. And then you can take that a step further and get with those chapter or get with those student leaders from the other organizations and say, well, we're thinking about doing, you know, ornaments around Christmas time. So if you guys want to do the sweatpants this year, then I think that would work out well. Instead of showing up uh, on the same day with the same item, uh, if you have it through, a, if you have a transparent process, uh, I think it's going to benefit uh, all organizations. I would definitely concur, Nick. Um, and sometimes there will be inevitable um, clashes, but if you can talk it out beforehand, that's much better. And probably if someone in an organization is doing something, they always are selling candy bars, probably not best to sell candy bar either. So respect um, what they sell at, or what they do as well. I think the respect hopefully should be a mutual um, should be held mutually across organizations. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes into working with them on future patient care events, on social events. It's just developing that rapport, that relationship amongst organizations for uh, that good business relationship that you can have down the road because you're never going to know uh, when you might need each other. So that's, those are the questions that I have. Uh, have you received any more, Virginia? That's it for on my end as well. So with that being said, I think we'll go ahead and conclude this. If you do have any questions about taxes or the SVP role, please do go ahead and feel free to contact me at any time. Um, and I am will probably return your call uh, within the hours of 9 to 5 Eastern Standard Time. Um, for those of you on the West Coast, I do understand that's not the best times for you since I'm originally from the West Coast, um, but I'll do my best to work with uh, get back to you just as fast as I can. So all of you have a great night and uh, we'll see you tomorrow on tomorrow's webinars or talk to you tomorrow on tomorrow's webinars. Take care everyone.